Justin Robert Young Show Daily brought to you by Patreon.com slash J U R Y. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome back to, this is the first official week, I feel like, first official week of Jury Daily. My name is Justin Robert Young. They call me Jury. I got a question for the gays. Where my, my I, I, want, I want my LGBTQA+, I want it all. I got a question. I've, I've been very proud on this show. In the history of this show, that we have been a clearinghouse of a lot of different personal issues. And I know a lot of you are probably just meat and potatoes folks that do not have access to thoughts and opinions, despite the fact that you are interested to hear them in stuff about the uh, trans community, about the gay community, the gay community, about the lesbian community. So I, I, that is a legacy of this show that I am very, very proud of. But I got a question. Because I've seen some bubbling up about this over the week. Last couple weeks, really. It is Pride Month here. Is it only here in America? Do, is, there, is it Pride Month globally? Is it, and by that, I mean, is it the same month globally? I don't know. But that means that there's pride parades throughout America. I live in the Bay Area, San Francisco, of course, a watershed city for gay rights. But there is a thing that I noticed, and then I noticed that it became a thing that I was starting to see bubble up. And I will boil it down to this question. And I specifically want it to be answered by the LGBTQA plus listenership. Is the Pride Parade specifically on the road to becoming St. Patrick's Day. Because when I look through my Snapchat, when I look through my Instagram, I see a lot of straight people out to party. Now, not to say that the Pride Parade has ever necessarily been a solemn moment, right? It has always been, uh, and I think should be, the celebration for which the community wants it to be. And that, at least in my lifetime, has been exuberant. Awesome. But... What I found interesting going forward is that as, you know, out here, and and, and Tal Israel points it out here in the chat, so let me just read it. A huge issue with the Pride Parade is sponsorships and support from the very institution that, uh, uh, that were the original grievances for the Stonewall riots. Out here, it is sponsored head to toe. Half the Pride Parade is our companies from and around this area marching in it. Now, I don't want to criticize that. I don't think that that's necessarily a problem. And to be honest, this is one of uh, uh, this is one of those issues that I literally just want. I, I want to visit this issue and I want to ask those that are most affected by it. Is Pride 
becoming something like St. Patrick's Day where it's more about a gathering and a celebration, sometimes bordering more about the celebration than what it was initially about. I, I'm curious. I'm curious. I've been to a couple of pride parades. It's always a fun time. If I ever want to, that my, my favorite thing about pride parades is walking around and saying, you want to know what? I should go to the gym. <laughs> That's usually my number one thought. My number one thought going to a pride parade is, man, I need to watch my diet more. All of these people are really in shape. You've got to really put in some work to walk around in the, that thong and angel wing uh, uh, ensemble while riding a unicycle. But I will say this, that in general, not to say that I am not a supporter of the LGBTQA plus community, for which I am, and not to say that I am not a fan of public drinking, which I am. But I'm not a parade guy. I don't like being out with a million different people, and I really don't like being on the BART with a million different people. So in general, I have only gone, since I've been here in San Francisco or, or the Bay Area, I've only been to the big pride parade once. And there was one, a friend of ours who had just moved out from uh, a, a, one of the Dakota territories who had very recently come out and very recently moved to the Bay Area and didn't have a lot of friends. Me and Ashley said, hey, let's go to Pride together. And it was great. He loved it. It was fantastic. It was a, 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 certainly a culture shock and a celebration. And I was happy. I was happy to be a part of of that moment. I was excited to be a part of that moment. And I'm not saying anything's different or changed. But I'm curious. I'm curious. This ADHD Live says, okay, so the feedback needs to be in the form of an email. I, I, yes, please go ahead and email it. Please go ahead and give me, uh, uh, give me, give me all the opinions that you uh, that 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 you have on this. I, I suspect that there's probably more to unpack in a question like this than than just a sentence in a in a in, in a in a chat room. So anybody listening, go ahead and hit me up if you are watching right now. Feel free, Justin Robert Young at gmail dot com. Justin Robert Young at gmail dot com. Put jury. In the subject line. In essence, are there too many straight people that are just there to get drunk? I guess really that's what it boils down to. When I say is pride becoming the new St. Patrick's Day, that's really what I'm, that's really what I am, uh, uh, really what I'm trying to, to, to drill down on. Are there too many straight people that are literally just there to get wasted? But let's go ahead and get to the emails that you guys have sent. By the way, the email train continues to roll on. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this has been a leap of faith to take this to a daily show. Uh, I now have a hopper full of emails that I'm kind of picking through. I'm saving a few of them for rainy days uh, uh, just in case we don't get a ton of stuff in. But I like things like this where we can keep an ongoing conversation. <laughs> Trench wildfire in our chat about this pride parade thing says straights just being there to get wasted describes pretty much every festival ever. So maybe this is the final form of acceptance in our culture. Congratulations, LBG L LGBTQA plus community. You've finally been accepted. Now the straights are just here to get drunk. Nick writes, I'm a big fan of all things Diamond Club. I came for the tech news and stayed for the personalities, but there's way too much content for one person with a job slash family to listen to. 
How do you work through deciding what wins your time? I haven't listened to weird things in over a year, even though I was really liking the direction it was taking. I haven't even started Unfriend Me, but I'm swamped under DTNS, Jury, PX3, and Night Attack. Does anyone else feel overwhelmed about the amount of content and feel like they were missing out on their lack of ability to listen to more of what is being released? All right. Unsurprisingly, I believe that this relates to a massive shift in human consciousness. Because, again, there is no show me the molehill that I can't make a mountain. I double dog dare you. I believe that there this is going to be a vastly antiquated notion. The idea of a being a completist the way that folks who were raised without an Internet understand it. We, the generation that used to show our support for something by going to buy the DVD collection and then showing it on our shelves forever, I think are ill-suited for the world of infinite content. And that people being born into a world where Netflix is releasing 50,000 different original series every day will understand that the world is full of stars. The universe is full of stars and we're never going to see all of them. The best thing we can do is see the ones that our friends recommend or the ones that call to us personally. So do I I feel bad when I get this email because I'm like, am I doing too much? But no. Because ultimately, what I believe is that I'm, I don't want to do, uh, it's already so much for me to do all this shit, right? So I don't expect everybody to listen to everything. But I do hope that somebody that wasn't a fan of how meandering the hour-long jury was might be excited by the idea that there's a 15 to 20 minute version that's more often. And that now there's a little bit more of a bite-sized piece to this. And I hope that people who are really into the politics get to have the politics, but that the politics doesn't have to bleed in to jury or DTNS. So what I'm all about is creating the perfect thing, not necessarily yet another patch in the quilt, if that makes sense. And I believe that everybody younger than me, <laughs> thinks that that's the way to go. Because they don't expect to listen to everything in a way that we might have expected to listen to everything or watch everything as we were growing up, when there was less. Phil writes, I've been on to that, sure, kids, we can watch The Incredibles again life all along. I'm st it's starting to feel a little crowded in here. <laughs> this is in response to that creepy, <laughs> creepy New Yorker article <laughs> where he's talking about the dad popping a fucking like a trebuchet boner, <laughs> just the popcorns flying comically throughout the theater. <laughs> Phil's always been on that Elastigirl's a pog lifestyle. Godspeed to you. Blessed be the trailblazers, Phil. Timothy writes, I was listening to this week's jury and I laughed out loud when you mentioned Uber for hand jobs being a possible result of legalizing mas massage parlor hand jobs. The idea is very funny to me and I'd love to hear you and the rest of the community run with the idea and figure out how it would work. A few questions come to mind. Number one, are you charged the same way that Uber is? Or is it a flat fee, is it a flat fee plus uh, minute and second charges if it goes longer? Do you have any control over who services you? Can you choose a man or a woman? Uh, if it is uh, gay, if you get the same sex hand job from an on-demand service, or does the randomness excuse it? Are there tiers like Uber X and Uber Black? If, uh, if so, what are they for? Maybe verified attractiveness or skill. Number four, how do we protect against discrimination? Are you penalized for canceling after the person arrives? 
And number five, what is this new breed of service called? Hand sharing? (laughs) (laughs) I love this idea. I love the idea that there would be a uh, <laughs> that there would be a scandal <laughs> that somebody would be like, "Oh no, a man who continually uh, 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 cancels on demand hand sharing when it's somebody not of their race or not of their preferred gender for shame, sir, resign, sir." When would be surge pricing on hand sharing? Hand sharing surge pricing would almost certainly be at uh, last call, right? It would be, here would be the depth chart. Go to the bar. Try to find a hookup. Can't find a hookup. Go to the text message. Try to uh, uh, find some... No, I guess here. Tinder date. That doesn't work out. You stay at the bar where you did the Tinder date. Try to hook up with somebody else. Not happening. Call last week's Tinder date. See if she wants to go out. Not happening. Go back uh, uh, to the house. Try to hit up that one booty call. The long shot booty call. Hit hit, hit it with a you up. No dice. Boom. Hand sharing. And then next thing you know, you're like, ah, shit. Shit, I fucked up. I fucked up. I should have known that it's going to be surge pricing at 2.30 in the morning. (laughs) Do I wait? Or do I just jerk myself off? Ah, fuck. I wonder, would only hand jobs... Are we closer to only hand jobs being legal? Because by the way, we already have the framework for this. We already have on-demand massage services. And I don't know how many of them give you a little roll of the dice if you slip them a little extra. I would assume, I think it's probably very much frowned upon. Probably is a violation of the TOS. But what if, what if in some forward-thinking, sex-positive areas, they were like, we are going to take the bold step of legalizing hand jobs and massages? Hmm. Makes you think, IMO. And finally, Hot Beverages writes... If a cockatiel and a bearded dragon meet in real life, will they think they'll, they are in our... Oh, I fucked it up. Take two. Hot Beverages writes, If a cockatiel and a bearded dragon meet in real life, will they think they're in Australia? I, know, I want to remind everybody that Wednesdays on this show... We do high thoughts. And holy shit, did you guys come to fucking play with the high thoughts? We got great, great high thoughts. If you want to get them in by tomorrow, go ahead and do it. Send them in, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Put high thoughts in the subject line. If you just want to email me about anything in your life, if you want to email me about whether or not straights getting too drunk are ruining pride, then please go ahead and write me, justinrobertyoung at gmail.com. Put jury in the subject line. Only a few fanny packs left. Diamond Club fanny packs. Go to clickclackfannypack.com. Of course, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, at Justin R. Young, and you can join the conversation at Diamond Club. Dot reddit.com that about wraps it up for this edition of jury daily until next oh until tomorrow please don't no!
Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>